It is Monday. I hope the week's starting off great for you. Let's start with a, uh, a little headfirst dive into the mailbag for the in-depth. Why don't we? We asked you for your questions about Hurricane Helene and the relief response in Western North Carolina. And email after email came in asking about everything from FEMA to farmers. If you have a question, get out your phone. Send me an email, dan at wral.com. Your feedback drives this segment, and we will work to get answers to your questions. Like Cindy, she asked, Dan, is anyone monitoring the wildlife populations in Western North Carolina? I'm particularly thinking about the bear population, but also for other wildlife. Cindy, thank you for writing in. We appreciate it. Yes, someone does monitor this stuff, NC Wildlife. So we brought your question to one of their biologists, and it turns out that the big mammals, like the bear and the bears out there and the deer, they usually do okay when it comes to hurricanes. They seek higher ground, they hunker down, or they just get out of the way. Birds, they will fly out of the way. Mandatory evacuation orders are in their blood. Cornell University has this thing called bird cast. It tracks bird migration using Doppler radar and they found one week before Helene hit nearly 5 million birds crossed through Buncombe County as the storm approached day by day that number ticked downward 1 million then turned to 60,000 then turned to 300 and the night before the storm it was zero not a single bird crossed through the county isn't that amazing four days later after the storm passed the number of birds jumped back to 7 million passing through the county. You see, birds have their own meteorology equipment built in. They can sense changes in barometric pressure. They feel the storm coming and they get out of there. That's pretty cool, don't you think? The coolest part, though, of our conversation with NC Wildlife has to do with three other things, though. Gopher frogs, hellbenders, and the magnificent ram's horn snails. And no, I didn't make those up. Those are real animals. Gopher frogs look kind of like a toad wearing leopard print. And let me tell you, okay, they love a sudden powerful storm because it gives them the sudden powerful urge to reproduce. The storms spur the frogs to go back into mating season, a aphrodisiac, if you will. The gopher frog is one of those species that, that's kind of struggling. And we've seen that in some cases, after really big tropical storms and things, they've gone back into mating, which could mean another opportunity for them to increase their population, which can be a good thing. At least somebody's having a good time, you dirty dogs, I mean, you, you dirty frogs. But this is legit. Hurricanes can help this species to avoid extinction. That brings us, though, to the hellbender. These are these slimy looking salamander guys, and they live in Western North Carolina. And unlike the birds and the bears, they don't move so well. For them, hurricanes pose a serious danger to their population. We learned that hellbenders are actually pretty delicate creatures. If you find one in the wild, it means that the habitat there is pretty healthy it can be a good barometer for an ecosystem that's thriving. And that brings us to the, in all their splendor and majesty, the magnificent ram's horn snail. These slimy, curly little dudes live almost exclusively here in our state of North Carolina. And last year, they made the endangered species list. The hurricane might have made that a bit worse. You don't need to be a biologist to know that snails don't move very fast. For them, evacuating a hurricane isn't really an option. NC Wildlife says that they will check on their population of those little guys once uh, more of the cleanup effort is finished. But the bottom line is, the takeaway, is that in most cases, animals kind of roll with the punches. It's not always doom and gloom for the wildlife. Sometimes they can benefit from, from these and, and see them as opportunities. Wildlife tend to find interesting ways of adapting, and uh, we, we kind of just have to wait and see what the overall impacts are going to be. Let's turn to plants for just a moment, specifically the crops farmed in western North Carolina. Denise wrote, I'm originally from Henderson County, which is known for its apple orchards. Can you tell us how they fared? How will this affect the farmers and consumers? So apples floating in the floodwaters, that was one of the first images that we saw out of the mountains really early on. And since then, orchards have started to recover, which is good. Fox Carolina caught up with Costin Farm Apple House in Hendersonville, and they are actually back to full production right now. So they're picking apples every single day, which is awesome. Other orchards will need some help. Something similar, uh, I can say, also happened with Christmas trees and Christmas tree farms. Millions of Christmas trees grow in the North Carolina mountains. In fact, this year, the White House is getting its Christmas tree from Cartners in Avery County. We talked to Sam Cartner, the farm owner. 
He says he lost 5,000 trees in the storm. They were all young trees, so it's not going to hurt business necessarily this season, but it could impact them in the years ahead. Other farmers weren't so lucky. At least one farm lost 5,000 trees set to be sold in the next couple months. Now, pictures of the damage on Cartner's farm. He told us that the storm didn't just wipe out trees. That's not the only problem. It took out roads and culverts. If you can't get to the trees, you can't harvest them, you can't sell them. Repairing this infrastructure costs upwards of $100,000, and that's just one farm. And there are 1,300 Christmas tree growers just in Western North Carolina. Still, the state ag department is confident they will endure. They wrote in a statement, we do not expect the aftermath of Hurricane Helene to have a significant effect on the supply of real North Carolina Fraser fir Christmas trees this holiday season. Our farmers have weathered the storm and are ready to persevere. Cartner Farms will send off its White House Christmas tree on November 20th, and they say the event won't just be about the tree. They're going to use it to raise money for the communities hit hardest by the storm. What else do you want to know about the Christmas tree farms in the mountains? What else do you want to know about the Helene response in general? We're taking questions about this and every other story that you see in the news. So let us know. Send us an email, dan at wral.com. Tell us what's on your mind, and we'll go in depth.